Finally. Hi. Hi. Huh? Mike, better? Better to hear me? Yeah. I hope so. Um, yeah. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Um, finally, I can give my talk. So it's going to be about why physics, dude. Um, so why should someone um, choose the life of a physicist? So um, become someone like this. Um, it's definitely not for the money. It's definitely not for the fame. And definitely not for the gold. Um, <laughs> Actually, it's just because we're curious, every one of us, even you, because if not, you wouldn't be here, right? Yeah. All right. OK. Um, so physicists are a certain type of um, person. Um, let me explain this. Um, and as an example, you get up in the morning, step out in the garden, and you see, wow, the, moon is, uh, the sun is shining. It's a beautiful sight, even a little rabbit hopping around in your garden. The weather is really, really beautiful, the birds flying around. And this is like many people see the world. But a physicist um, see it in a totally different way. <laughs> he sees particle showers. Yeah, that's thanks, Marcel. Uh, particle showers in the world coming from the cosmic rays. He sees, if you're looking at the sun, he sees cosmic fusion, he sees nuclear fusion going on in the sun. Um, even think about the gravity, how the um, sun keeps us in the place, the earth in the place. He's looking at the river, and the river itself is an incompressible fluidity flowing through the um, area. He sees the rabbit and looking about, um, think about the, what he's eating, um, the whole uh, um, um, metabolism. So a physicist sees the world in a totally different uh, kind of way. So we're really, really curious people and want to understand the nature as good as we can. And as good as we can by now is this. So basically, uh, physicists deal with two types of theories. Um, one of um, theory, one of the famous theory is uh, the Einstein field equation. And they deal with the gravity. So the gravity itself ex is um, explained by the field equations. Garabet explained this really beautiful um, by this uh, curvature in space time. And um, the other forces we know as a physicist, we know four, gravity is just one of them, is the electromagnetic force. And um, actually, a lot of people think, know what this is. It's just for example, light, um, uh, electromagnetic force, also um, everything, electric current, while you stay on your table and don't fall through the table, this is also electromagnetic force. Um, actually, um, most, thing, uh, most things in the uh, um, uh, normal life is um, um, yeah, ruled by this force. Um, physicists know two more. The weak force, the weak force itself is uh, taking care of the nuclear fusion, for example, or when it, um, coming to radioactivity, about decay particles, um, decaying particles, this is done by weak force. And the strong force, that's the force um, who, um, which, which um, keeps the nuclear and the nucleus and the atom together. Yeah? Um, well, these four forces are um, um, known by physicists, and uh, as I said, Einstein took care of this one. And the uh, standard theory of particle physics is dealing with these three forces. So um, these are two, two big um, theories. And they don't go together right now. This is a big problem. Yeah? For example, um, we have open questions. Even with the best proven theories ever, we still have some open questions. Um, as an example, gravity. Yeah? Gravity is weak. Gravity is really weak. Gravity is really, 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 really weak. Now think of it, um, you have a needle. You let it drop, drop it to the bottom, so the whole Earth is pulling onto the needle. Yeah? The whole gravitational force is forcing the needle to stay on the bottom. Sounds, no, sounds like it's a huge force, yeah, right? But you have a small, tiny magnet, and this small, tiny magnet can lift this needle. So the small, tiny magnet can create much more force attracting onto the needle than the whole Earth. So the electromagnetic force is much, 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 much stronger than the uh, gravity. And that's a big reason why. We don't know it yet. Um, um, there are many possible ways to explain this. I won't go into this further. We have other people will dealing with this. But um, this is really a strong question for the physicists, why this is such a big difference in these forces. Um, just a question for you. Um, when the gravity is so weak, as I said, why it's still the dominating force in the universe? Well, let's. Okay, we'll come to this later in the answer, question and answer. You can, you can puzzle a bit about this. Um, now, staying with the universe, um, think about the ingredients of the universe. As a physicist, um, with the particles, um, um, Garabet explained before, so the particles we know only make something like 4% of the whole universe. Uh, something about 22% of the universe is, some, is made of so-called dark matter. Um, we'll hear about this later. Um, and also, something like 74% of the universe is something uh, is made of um, something we call dark energy. 
So actually we just know this tiny bit of the whole universe and um, there's still something we can discover. And that's also the reason why we should do physics because there's still a lot of things we can, we can learn. And another thing is um, the so-called Higgs boson. <laughs> yeah? Isn't it cute? Okay, um, <laughs> we're still looking for this pal. So he's hiding somewhere um, we don't know where it is right now. Um, the Higgs boson um, is a particle which um, brings mass to the elementary particles as we know them. Uh, um, dealing with particles, um, we all know they have mass, mass is all around us, um, everyone has some kind of weight. Um, but the theories right now, no, they don't consider something like particle masses. We have to measure them and we have to put them in the theories, but the theory doesn't say anything about masses at all. So if we want to know something about mass, we have to discover um, or we have to add a new mechanism to the um, um, well already known theories. And this theory or this mechanism is called the Higgs mechanism also uh, Scottish physicist Peter Higgs. And um, this mechanism creates a new particle, and that's the Higgs particle. And um, how does the mass come just from this uh, small, tiny friend? Um, think about a spoon. Yeah. You want to measure the weight of the spoon, how heavy it is. Then you just go ahead and turn it around in the air, and you can guess, yeah, okay, it should be something well, like a few pounds or something, or a few grams, it's demands, yeah. You can guess the weight just by moving the spoon. And then some guy wants to fool you and he creates something around the spoon, something like a honey field. So, and this honey field will slow down the spoon. Uh, you need to create more, you, you need to um, push harder, you need to um, put more force onto the spoon to keep it on the same speed. Uh, so you think the spoon is getting heavier. Of course it isn't. A spoon didn't get heavier, it's just interacting this honey spoon con um, thing and this is something we understand as mass. Uh, it's the same thing, we think it's, it's getting heavier, but it's not. It's just this interaction between the honey and the spoon. And that's the same with this Higgs field. When particles flow through this field, they, they interact with this field, and we understand this interaction as mass. Yeah? Okay, and this is quite a good theory, yeah? but we haven't proved it yet. And yeah, we still want to prove it, and this, this can only be done by uh, discovering the Higgs particle. And this is another thing we are looking for at the LHC, for example. Okay, but how do we create? A particle. I mean, they're just new for us, they're already existing in the nature, but how can we create a new particle? Uh, okay, this is really mm, easy thing. Okay, we like to shoot really, really, really um, um, light particles like electrons onto each other, so they don't have, um, yeah, they are really light, um, but they have a high kinetic energy, so they're really, really fast. And when they collide, you have a small, tiny, dense energy um, um, state. So small space, a small um, volume with a high energy, and um, then something happens. Think of the bullets. Yeah? The bullets, each of them is not so heavy when they collide. Um, they have a high energy, but not a huge mass. But um, when they collide, something really heavy can create, can, uh, can, can uh, exist. Like a car. No. Nice, yeah, a car. A car can pop up through this collision. But this car is so, uh, so heavy, then it will decay. It will decay immediately, and um, only we got is the garbage. We have to um, collect all the parts uh, and have to measure them, we have to sort them, and then we can analyze what we got there. <laughs> then we can say, oh, right, it was a car we created while shooting bullets onto each other. And that's what we're doing with detectors. So we're just collecting the, the decay parts and trying from this um, um, trying from this to um, think about, okay, what particles just um, 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 created through this collision? Um, that's how particle physics with an accelerator works. Um, but the uh, question is, how do we accelerate them? Uh, how do we create particles with such a high energy? Uh, and this is done by cavities. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot something. Um, the probability, um, how probable is it to create a new particle? Well, think, about, um, think again about this guy. Um, this guy is looking for a very, very special girl, and um, <laughs> he's really eager to find some. But the probability that this guy will meet this girl uh, is really, really, really low. So he has to, <laughs> has to meet a lot of people until he finds a girl, um, which will, uh, which will, so they both will attract to each other, let's say it like this. So, um, that's the reason why we have to make so many collisions per second, millions and billions of collisions per second, um, and have to uh, sample data over years just to find one or two or maybe five or six new part, uh, particle collisions, which we created new particles, and um, therefore we can say, okay, 
there's the Higgs boson. That's the reason why we need uh, so large machines um, and sample data over years. But now I'm coming to the questions, how to accelerate them? That's a big question. Um, it's quite easy, again. Um, we use cavities, <laughs> but, not, <laughs> but not these kind of cavities. We use these. Cavities are not so um, um, complicated to understand. Basically, um, just a um, capacitor. So you have two um, um, charged plates, one uh, negatively charged and one positively charged plate. And if you um, um, have an electron on this side, it will get attracted to this side and move along the field lines. And this is how the electron gain energy. That's it, basically. You just apply a voltage, and um, just by um, flowing through this voltage, the electron will gain energy. Of course, we do this in a vacuum and so on, so it will, won't look like this. It more, um, will look like this. So you have a pipe, so the electron can enter the cavity and move out again, so circle in the, and in the accelerator, for example. And you have to close it up because you have a vacuum inside. And um, basically, this is a cavity, but that's not it. You have to think about the cavities itself. They have to be cooled down to a temperature of 2K. <laughs> and that's even colder than the universe. The average temperature in the universe is 2.7K. Uh, it's colder than the universe. That's another puzzle, um, how you cool something down to a temperature while well, the temperature is colder than the uh, universe. That's an interesting question. And you apply voltages, um, like 35 megawatts per meter we want to apply. Just to give you an um, example, um, normal lightning in the nature has a normal voltage of two, um, two megavolt per meter. So the lightning, uh, the, the voltage we apply in a cavity is much, much higher than a normal, uh, in a normal lightning. Um, okay, and then um, while we're doing this stuff, we're creating a new um, accelerator. It's the ILC, Jim mentioned it before. It's the International Linear Collider we want to build, but therefore we need 16,000 cavities. Uh, so 16,000 cavities. And that's why we can also say ILC can stand for I love cavity. That's what I'm working on. <laughs> and okay, and then just in time, and finally I did it. Thanks. 